Hey Nomadic Fanatic, Eric here. I'm going to be talking to you about how I heat my RV in the winter. I'm really into the propane furnace. Um, I think that it's really efficient. I think that it's way more effective than any of the electric 1500 watt uh, space heaters that you can get. Um, it just works a lot better and, and, I, and I've tested the two. I go through a lot more propane in the winter. I actually double my propane use in the winter when I use my 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 propane furnace and one thing to remember is that heat rises so i mean just in my rv in this tiny little space um, there is a 12 degree difference between what the temperature is a foot off the ground compared to what the temperature is a foot off of the ceiling 12 degree difference um, lucky for me i sleep in the cab over area which is already up high so it, that's like the warmest spot of the rv up there at night so 60 degrees is, is just fine doesn't doesn't bother me at all. Now my RV has a duo therm uh, thermostat up here. Um, I've seen a lot of RVs have the same exact one. I don't know. But just so you know, I'm in a 1983 Ford Fleetwood Tioga. Since it's so much colder on the floor, my floors are extremely cold. It is an absolute necessity to wear slippers all the time or have some kind of interior shoe because going barefoot or just socks on the floor, it, your feet are gonna freeze. It's, and it's really uncomfortable. So just know that the floor is really cold. Now there's two steps I also take to help control the heat in here. One thing is I have this blanket separating the cab over area where the driver's seat and passenger seat are. And um, that really helps the heat not go into that area. I mean, if I reach my hand underneath that and put my hand in where the driver's seat is, it feels about 20 degrees colder up there. So that's how I know that blanket is, is just helping me warm a, keep warm a smaller space. And the other thing I do is I close the bathroom door when I go to bed so that I'm not having to heat that all night long. There's no reason to do that. When I wake up in the morning, fire up the generator, make a pot of coffee, then I open up that door and you know a lot of cold air is going to come through and the heat's going to mix and the thermostat's going to be like oh and you know i need to cl cl click back on and make the rest of this warm so it's no big deal i think i i think i'm saving a lot of uh, propane by closing that at night and having that blanket up and i've also mentioned this in other videos but i keep my thermostat set at 60 degrees that is just fine for me i have never needed it to be any warmer even when i get out of the shower and you know, I'm cold and everything, 60 degrees is fine. I never make it go any higher. If you're someone that needs it to be 72 or 76 degrees all the time, then you may go through propane a lot faster than I do. <laughs> now one misconception a lot of people have about propane furnaces is that the fact that they think it doesn't run on electric. It doesn't take electric of any kind because it's it's propane. And I mean, obviously you need to understand that the, the thermostat itself in order for it to click on, it takes a spark from your DC battery to be able to click on <clears throat> the propane, you know, to make it work. And then as that propane heater is working, it's also got the DC fan blowing it through all the vents throughout your RV. So you're constantly drawing some type of power off of your DC battery as long as that furnace is on. Also, from personal experience, I know this, if you were to run out of propane in the middle of the night while, while you're sleeping, um, so there's no more fire, there's no more flame in your furnace. Your thermostat doesn't understand what's going on. It's going to continue to run the fan nonstop and never shut off because it's trying to get it to a specific temperature that you've set it to and it just can't. So unfortunately, once you lose propane and if you're sleeping, it's going to continue to get colder and colder and colder. It's just going to keep blowing colder air until you finally wake up and you're like, what the hell happened? Oh, I'm out of propane. So understand that before you go to bed once you turn on your thermostat and it clicks on you know it fires up and then the blower starts blowing that air that comes out at first is going to be very cold it's going to be like and it comes right behind this chair so when i'm sitting here on the laptop and it clicks on it's like oh my arm like instantly gets goosebumps because it's so cold and it takes three or four minutes before that air actually even starts to get warm uh by five minutes it's extremely hot 
like you can't even put your hand down there and put it in front of the air because the, it's so hot. Okay, it's very efficient. Once it gets to that stage, it's not going to take very long to heat up the RV, but I find it kind of weird that it blows so much cold air initially. And then also, once it's reached the desired temperature that you set it to, or if you were to, you know, manually just take the knob and f slip it down to the off position, it sounds like it didn't do anything. <laughs> Actually, all it really does is it shuts off the gas and there's no more flame. However, the fan is going to continue to run for three or four minutes. And it's going to slowly, the temperature that's coming out of that fan is going to slowly get colder and colder and colder. Um, until it feels like it's like blowing cold air again. And it's like, what the hell? <laughs> But it, it's this system that actually cools down the whole furnace, so it's like a safety precaution. But just, you know, just understand that you turn it off, it's not necessarily going to turn off right away. It's still going to go through this process of cooling down. So yeah, that's the stuff I wanted to talk to you about the furnace. I do have two other things that I wanted to ask you guys for help, if possible. I am looking for a new control panel for my RV and I will show you what it looks like. I mean, again, I'm in a 1983 Ford Fleetwood Tioga, and uh, this control panel is for everything from monitoring the tanks, um, how much fresh water I have, how much propane I have. It also has the water pump switch to turn that on and off. And as you can see, it always has the one half light, orange light lit all the time. Um, it's just something that I've kind of been dealing with and just understanding that I can't fix it, you know. So when I push the holding tank one or the propane level, that half thing is always going to be lit. So whether it's really at a quarter tank or really at three quarters tank, I'm not going to know based on those two lights because the half thing is always lit. So I don't know how close it was to being three quarters tank compared to how it was at one I don't know it's really hard to explain I'm sure I could just get over it and not deal with it however I'm you know I'm actively looking now on Craigslist and RV salvage yards all over Puget Sound trying to find a new one I, I've seen them you know in other people's tours of their RVs they have the same exact control panel that I have so I showed you some pictures of it if you see anything like that or know of anybody that might have that year the years could vary too you know it could be you know, an older RV or a newer RV that still has that same one. Um, but if you can get it to me with the harness, with the wiring harness in the back so I can just clip it back in, um, please let me know and I'll buy it from you. <laughs> um, the other thing is about my documentary about RV living, I, I'm still looking for a little more diversity. <laughs> I mean, I've interviewed four men so far and I was thinking it would be great if I could find a female who is also into RVing full-time. Um, I don't know. If anybody knows of anybody in the Northwest or Puget Sound area that is female and also lives a similar lifestyle to me, uh, if you could have them get a hold of me and, you know, I'll feature them in my documentary. I I'm always looking for more people, too. I'm not saying, like, I only want four or five. You know, I'll have as many as possible. I can never have too many people to interview. I'm actually interviewing uh, Chris Penn, on Wednesday when he gets back into the country um, going up to Bellingham and we're gonna shoot some video up there and do an interview that'll be that'll be a great thing for him to get back into his van he's been in uh, I think Thailand for like six months three at three or six months now so yeah it'll be an interesting addition so anyway keep your ears out for people in my documentary and that control panel and I'll be talking to you guys later